How's it going, everyone? My name is Broken Pinky. I'm your coach of the Houston Dracos, and uh, welcome to a bit of a different video here. Basically, um, after our week two game, looking forward to our week three game, I was looking at my team, uh, and I, I don't know, the vibes weren't feeling right. So uh, today we're here in, you know, a very chilled, chilled out, low down setting. Uh, we're going to try to fix up the vibes of our team. But what do I mean by that? Well, you see the team in front of you. We got Latios, Lucario, Iron Bundle, Cinderace, Screamtails to Raptor, Subin Quillfish, Copperaja, Lantern, Bramblegast, and Local Z the Gligar. Of course, our Tarek happens to be Lucario and Gligar. However, look at the squad. Uh, I looked at my matchup for week three, to be honest. That's what sparked the whole thing. And I said, this squad is so bad into my week three matchup. And is probably going to be bad into most of my other matchups. That it's time to make some changes. And that's okay. Change is inevitable. Uh, I'm a little upset with myself because uh, I could have made all these changes during grace period, but I just, I'll be completely honest. My eyes skipped over a certain Pokemon because uh, I had such tunnel vision for what I wanted. And uh, looking back on it, I realized I was stupid, but hey, they say hindsight is 2020 for a reason. So what did I drop? Did I drop Latios? Did I drop Bundle? Did I drop Cinderace? Did I drop, did I drop, uh, did I drop a little, little Glizzy? Um, I dropped four Pokemon. So I dropped four Pokemon, I picked four Pokemon up, and I switched one of my Terra Captains. So I guess in a sense, Lil Glizzy is not my Terra Captain anymore. I'll spoil that. I do have a new Terra Captain instead of Lil Glizzy. We'll get to that when we get to that. So who did I drop? First of all, I, there are three Pokemon I have not brought to any game. Uh, those being Lantern, Suing Quillfish, and Bramblegast. And I ended up dropping two of them, because I figured if I wasn't going to bring them to the first few games probably not going to bring it for the rest of the season and i want to get a team of 11 pokemon that i'm actually going to bring to games because i feel like otherwise i wasted my points and i feel like i kind of wasted my points on quillfish and lantern i'm not gonna lie i don't know i didn't feel like i got a ton of value from these guys like they're good pokemon don't get me wrong quillfish you know has a good move pool it has access to, to you know paint or to spikes gets pain split gets toxic spikes uh bar barrage is a really cool move it gets Aqua Drift Priority, it gets he it's a uh, Haze Pokemon, it gets Destiny Bond. It gets some cool stuff, it does some cool things, but um, that attack stat's kind of low. The bulk is okay, but it's very reliant on a Violite. Intimidate's a great ability, but a Violite, it relies on a Violite a lot, and that means that I it's not a good switch into the move Knockoff. And I talked about this before. Knockoff is a very, very free move into my team, and I didn't like that. I really didn't. So. I wanted to make some changes to make it so that knockoff was not quite as free into my squadron. Um, because I have two dark resists, Quillfish and Lucario. Lucario wants this item most weeks and Quillfish needs it to violate. So I don't know. I just didn't really like it. It's very one dimensional. It's a big momentum sink because it doesn't get any momentum moves. Um, it sets up spikes and toxic spikes well, but to be honest, if I wanted a violate Pokemon with an 85 speed tier that gets access to spikes and toxic spikes. I already have Gligar. Like Gligar does that. It gets U-turn. It gets knockoff. So it's it has even a bigger bag of tricks. Just felt like it was better. I felt like it was a little redundant, and I thought I would just use Gligar more, which I showed by actually using Gligar. And while I didn't use it for spike sets, that doesn't mean I'm not beholden to. So I don't know. Just wasn't a big fan of it in practice. But then Lantern, speaking of not a big fan of practice, that's Lantern, man. I think I said this in the week one team builder. I was really close to bringing Lantern to the game, and I didn't. Because it was just too passive, didn't do much. It was just a status spreader Pokemon. And that just kind of sums up how I feel about it. It's very passive. Its bulk is not nearly as good as you think it is. You know, the HP is massive, um, but the defenses are not great. Special attack is pretty weak. Volt Absorb is a good ability, don't get me wrong. Um, but the move pool is solid. Flip turn, discharge, volt switch, skull, thunder wave, ice beam. It, it gets good moves. Um, but I just didn't think it was the right Pokemon for my team. I just, I don't know, it just wasn't enough of anything. And I felt like I, I just kind of picked it for the types rather than the merit of the Pokemon itself. So I didn't want to do that again. Um, so yeah, these two, I didn't bring to any games. Uh, either my first two games. Probably wasn't going to bring them to any games in the future. So I'm not too torn up about him. Um, but the last two, I'll be honest, I'm a little sad. A little, a little part of me is sad. Screamtail, 
I'm, I'm sorry, man. This is, of my nicknames, this is definitely my favorite because, you know, it's it's hilarious in my opinion as someone who has been following, you know, competitive melee for years. Uh, hold on, I think I, my fan has been going off. There we go. Very, very scuffed. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me a bit better, but to sum up, uh, in case you couldn't hear me, because I don't really feel like recording this because I already re-recorded it once and I don't want to do it again. I wanted to make some changes to my team. Wasn't super happy. Quillfish and Lantern weren't quite pulling the weight. Screamtail. It's this Pokemon has everything going for it. And then it's a fucking psychic type for no reason. Why did they make this thing psychic? Jigglypuff was part fairy. They could have made it any other type in the game. They could have made it, I don't know, dark type, dragon type. They could have made it electric type. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Um, but no, they made it psychic. And I said when I drafted this thing that the psychic typing would be the biggest thing holding it back. And my god, does it hold it back. Getting a ghost weakness, a neutrality to dark moves, and a neutrality to U-turn really, really blows. And it's not really worth it for the other things that Screamtail gets, in my opinion. Psychic and Fairy, I think, is a very overrated dual type. And every time I've used a Psychic and Fairy Pokemon, Screamtail included, I've been very underwhelmed. Um, which sucks, because this thing has an amazing move pool. It really does. It has access to everything you could ever want. I mean, okay, it's missing, like, if it had Recover, then it would have everything it ever wants. But, like, Baton Pass, Bulk Up, Calm Mind, Dazzling Gleam, Disable, Encore, Expanding Force, Flamethrower, uh, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, Ice Beam, Light Screen, Reflect, Parish Song, Roar, Stealth Rock, Stored Power, Thunder Wave, Wish. Like, it, it's everything you could ever want and more. Um, but that Psychic Typing is so hard to work around. It's so hard. And I just... For me, personally, I just didn't think I was good enough to, to use it correctly uh, and work around that psychic typing, especially when I already have Latios, which I'm really tempting to bring. I don't want to stack those weaknesses every single week. So, Screamtail, I gave the boot. And last up, this hurts. This this really hurts. I, I like this Pokemon a lot. I really liked using it. It was the goat of week one. A little underwhelming week two, but... Man, I like Copperaja. Just to send you off, man. You're our Iron Treasure today. But yeah, Copperaja got to go. But why does it got to go? My team was going in a very offensive direction. Like, very aggressive. Like, all my Pokemon were just hit hard, hit hard, hit hard. And that's just not really how I like to play. I like Bulk. I really do like Bulk. I like being able to pivot. I like being able to switch. And Copperaja was kind of a byproduct of that. Where, you know, it hits hard. It hits really, really hard. But it's not bulky. Like, it's bulky, but it's not that bulky. It has good HP. But the defenses are low enough to where it kind of gets offset, similarly to Lantern. Like, the bulk on these two is pretty comparable, and not in a great way. It feels like this Pokemon is kind of forced onto a Salt Vest, and then I just don't get to set up Stealth Rock with it, and I don't get to click Taunt or Whirlwind or any of the other great moves it gets. I don't know. It's another Pokemon where, like, on the right team, it's incredible. I just don't think this is the right team. And when I already have a Steel type like Lucario that hits really hard, and the whole point of his second Steel type is to have one that is bulky. It just wasn't bulky enough for that. So, yeah. I mean, Cabaraja put an amazing work in week one. There's no denying that. It was a great... It, it even, like, did, did a big chunk of Dragalge in week two, even though it lost the 1v1 because Double Focus Blast. Um, it's still a great Pokemon. Uh, I enjoyed using it for the two weeks I had it. Um, but we are moving on to bigger and better pastures here. So... This totals to 33 points. The total value of these four Pokemon, this is eight points, six points, seven points, 12 points, so 33. Plus I had one extra point left over at the end of the draft um, that I could use for my transactions, so 34 points. I had 34 points of Pokemon to work with. What did I do with those 34 points? Well, I got myself a new Hungry Box first off, so. Fucking fuck is in the past. Come on, you know you're fucking with, motherfucker! I'm H-Box, bitch! I'm H-Box, bitch. We got Clefable. Oh my god, Clefable is such a good Pokemon. Also, little side note for me. Um, I wanted more shiny Pokemon, because I didn't really like any of these shinies. I mean, shiny Quillfish is good. But these three don't really have good shinies. I mean, eh, this is a good one. But these two have bad shinies in my opinion. I don't like them. 
So I wanted a Pokemon that I was going to make shiny. So I got four Pokemon that are going to be shiny. Um, if, you know, that's possible. Uh, I guess, spoilers. It's not going to be possible for all of them. But we can dream. We can try. We can do our best. And we can hold hands and, you know, jump in a circle and do whatever. But Clefable. Why did I get Clefable? You know, look at, like, look, look at how much lower these numbers are, dude. Like, you have 483 numbers. This has 570 numbers. Like... It's just, I mean, ignore the tier. It's, it's just so much more numbers, you know? A hundred points of base stat total. This thing has so much less HP, defense, special defense, speed, and the attack doesn't matter. It's lower in four out of five stats. Why could I possibly want... Oh, right, it's not psychic type. Yeah, that, that psychic typing, such a dead weight. So, Clefable not being psychic type, it's a godsend. But, doesn't stop there. Gets a few moves that uh, Screamtail does not, and he uses them very well first of all I, okay i don't know where my keyboard is apparently moonlight boom this thing wants instant recovery doesn't get it this thing does moonlight is incredible okay it's not incredible it's good it's really good for this thing because screen tail if it wants to heal itself it needs to use wish and it needs to use protect to make sure it gets its own wishes because it's bulky but like two strong neutral hits are going to hit really hard but clef just heals itself with one moonlight which is super nice. It also gets Cosmic Power. This is a very, very, very dangerous setup move. Uh, if And it can get out of hand pretty quickly. It can make Clefable a very scary sweeper. Um, but it also still gets access to Calm Mind. And what's notable about Clefable versus Screentail is that it has much higher special attack. 95 versus 65. Very, very noticeable. So Calm Mind Clef hits a lot harder than Calm Mind Screentail. Especially since its stab move, instead of Dazzling Gleam, is Moonblast, which is much, much better. It also gets a Luring Voice if I want to use that, um, which is a pretty solid move, but I think Moonblast just hits so hard. 95 base power, 95 special attack, does a lot more damage than the Dazzling Gleam off of Screamtail, to the point where it's not even funny. Um, and it just, I mean, the moves just go on. It still gets Baton Pass, and it still gets Wish, so it's still a great Wish Passer. Um, but it still gets, you know, Stealth Rock, Thunder Wave, Trick... Reflect, light screen, psychic coverage, ghost coverage, fire coverage, electric coverage. This thing also gets knockoff, a move that Screamtail does not get, which is phenomenal. Uh, getting knockoff is amazing. It still gets Encore as well. But the real prize are in the abilities. Magic Guard is one of the best abilities in Pokemon. Just straight up. It's so broken. What Magic Guard does is it makes me immune to all indirect forms of damage. Which means Stealth Rock, Spike, Poison Damage, Burn Damage, Sandstorm. Doesn't sound like a huge deal. It's a huge fucking deal. I know that most of my opponents have not been setting up Stealth Rock into me. But once they start to, Clefable becomes a really good Pokemon. Um, because it's just immune to the hazards, which is super nice. Uh, and it just, I mean, it makes my team even more resilient to hazards than Court Chain Cinderace would make it. And it frees up a lot of my Pokemon a lot because now there's just a reliable sponge pivot that can switch into pretty much anything. It doesn't have to worry about taking 25% from rocks and spikes. It doesn't have to worry about getting status because, you know, it's immune to poison and burn damage. Um, and it can trick just weird items like a flame orb or a sticky barb or a, I think sticky barb does it. Yeah, that it just um, just passive damage. But Clefable's immune to it because of Magic Guard. Um, the other reason why I wanted it, and the reason why I wanted it for the battle in particular, my week three battle, is Unaware. Uh, unaware is a great ability. If you noticed, this league is full of Pokemon that want to set up. All three of my opponents have had dangerous setup Pokemon. Week one um, versus Dean, Dean Maka, Dragonance, Dragonite. Week two versus um, the Dark Saber, Superior, Blaziken, Blastoise, Mew. Like the whole team was set up. Mimikyu. Uh, versus week three. You'll see it when we get there, but my god, is there a lot of setup. Um, and being unaware to it is so powerful. So powerful. And the fact that I can bluff one ability or the other is really nice. Especially since unaware pairs very well with heavy duty boots on this Pokemon as it can bluff Magic Guard and then people just set up in your face and then they do like three damage. So, Clefable is very, 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 very good. This was 15 points. This was 12 points, by the way. These Pokemon are more than three points apart, in my personal opinion. No psychic typing, access to moonlight, access to knockoff, 
are all that valuable in my mind. This thing should be like four or five points higher in my opinion. Screamtail is a little bit of a ripoff in my opinion. Uh, I don't think it's you know that amazing, but you can't really let it Terra, so 12 points is fair. But yeah, I'm HBox, bitch. Going to be on the squadron. Next up, I said I wanted to bulk your steel type. If I'm, or if I'm gonna have a second steel type that is, you know, not Lucario. If I have an aggressive steel type, I want a bulky steel type. And I got the bulkiest steel type of them all, Registeel. Another phenomenal shiny, by the way. So, Registeel is worse than a Copper Ocean in a few regards. The abilities are worse. Clear Body's a good ability, but these two are just better for what this Pokemon wants to do. Now, the tax stat. 75 versus 130, not even comparable. The coverage goes squarely in Copper Rogers' favor. Knockoff is a great move. Superpower is a great move. Supercell Slam is a great move. Stone Edge, Earthquake, High Horsepower, Outrage, Heat Crash, Heavy Slam, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. But Registeel is no slouch. This thing is really bulky. Really, really bulky. It loves to get wishes from Clefable as well. Clef and Registeel are just a such a good defensive pairing. And they actually pair pretty well with Latios as well. So the Fairy Dragon Steel Core has a lot more synergy than it did before. Also, this Pokemon gets, you know, still gets access to Stealth Rock, gets access to Thunder Wave. Um, and it's a much better user of Body Press. Body Press is a great move for this thing because it has a fat ass defense stat even without being invested. Heavy Slam still hits pretty hard because this Pokemon is still pretty heavy. Um, and it's so much bulkier. I said that Copper Rush kind of feels stuck on Assault Fest, and I ran Assault Fest on it both weeks. But Red Shield is bulky enough that, like, I can just run Leftovers. And with Protect, which this Pokemon runs really well, has a good amount of longevity. A lot more than you'd expect. It could be very hard to kill a Registeel, even without, you know, me passing wishes to it. So, yeah. I mean, Registeel is a phenomenal Pokemon. It's one I've used in the past. It's one I love using. Um, and I'm excited to use it again. It's just a very bulky Pokemon, and I want to take my team in a bit of a bulkier direction while still keeping a lot of the offense. So, I mean, we're getting rid of some offense. Don't get me wrong. We are getting rid of our Iron Treasure. But... There's still plenty of offense to go around. You know, we have Cinderace, Latios, Bundle, Lucario, Bramblegast. This team hits hard, especially when supported by the spikes that our Gligar has. Now, I'll save Lantern for last. So, Registeel was 10 points compared to Copper Rush's 7. Clefable was 15 points compared to Screamtail's 12. So, I'm in the whole 6 points. Really with 5 points because of the extra point I had. So I needed a Pokemon a lot cheaper than, than Hisuian Quillfish. Ideally one that keeps the typing, because Dark Poison typing is mwah, chef's kiss. It's a very good typing. Um, and there was really only one Pokemon for the job. And uh, I snagged that shit up. Did not get drafted, which I understand, but I think this Pokemon is slept on. Oh my goodness, Skuntank is good. Well, it's not good. It's, it's, it's fine. It's solid. It's better than people give it credit for. First of all, we love the shiny. Second of all, Aftermath is a great ability. Intimidate is better, don't get me wrong, but Aftermath is still a good ability. The stats are worse than Qu Quillfish. Let's let's not mince words here, okay? It's a little slower, a little weaker, and it's bulkier without the Violet, but with the Violet, it's not even comparable. Special attack is a bit better, but that doesn't matter too, too much. Unless I run nasty plot sets, which are on the table, I'm just saying. But why did I want the Scum Tank? Well, like I said, this thing was super cheap. This thing is four points compared to Quillfish's eight, so this saves me four points. But Skunk Tank has its own bag of tricks that I think are honestly as valuable as Quillfish having spikes. Just, just, just stay with me for a bit. The biggest thing, the biggest issue with Quillfish is its offensive moves, its attacking moves. Look at what dark moves this thing gets. We get Crunch, Lash Out, Throat Chop, Taunt, Bite, Dark Pulse. Not great. They're solid, but you're missing a lot of the dark type's greatest hits. And uh, where are they? They're right here. Let's take a look. And I see knockoff. I see sucker punch. And I see foul play. These three are just incredible moves. Incredible moves. Like, so, so good. And having them all consolidated on one Pokemon, your Chrono Trigger in the League 3 battle, is really, really good. <laughs> really, really, really good. Um, plus, it has good moves aside from that. Fire coverage is pretty solid. Nasty plot is pretty solid. Haze, it still keeps. Um, player off is a good move. Uh, it gets, you know, Sludge Bomb, Sludge Wave, Toxic, and it gets Toxic Spikes. It also gets Temper Flare for some nice physical fire coverage. And it gets Super Fang, which is a really good move. So Super Fang, Toxic Spikes, it still keeps. 
I mean, the bag of tricks, you know, just having just having these four moves over Quillfish is really, really nice. Like just chunking stuff with super, super Fang, getting rid of items, good priority move, beating, like just beating down physical attackers. This Pokemon's a lot better than people are going to give it credit for, in my opinion. It also gets access to Endeavor and Explosion for some good means of momentum and damage. Memento is another good means of momentum. So I don't know. It's just a good Pokemon, in my opinion. I like it. Uh, I've used it before in the past. It's, it's done me pretty well. And I'm excited to use it again because uh, Scumtank has a pretty big tr bag of tricks that a lot of people are not prepared for. So that is going to be Scumtank. But I did reveal at the beginning that I was going to be getting a new Terra Captain in place of Lil Glizzy. And I think it's time that they show themselves. They show their glorious dad bod. We got Belly Bolts. So if you're, if you're good at math, you would have noticed that I needed a Pokemon one point cheaper than Lantern. This Pokemon is five points. Lantern is six points. So it just adds up, you know, Bellabolt, Registeel, Skuntank, Clefable, out up to 34 points. Uh, and I'm going to keep it $1,000. Skuntank, Registeel, and Bellybolt are all way too cheap. Um, Bellybolt being cheaper than Lantern is honestly a bit of a crime in my opinion. First of all, these stats are so much better than Lanterns, it's not even funny. Lower HP, but not by much. 15, 16 lower HP. In exchange for 91 defense, which is like 33 higher. 83 special defense, which is a little bit higher. But still, you know, noticeably higher. Speaking of noticeably higher, 76 special attack to, let's see, 103? Mmm, delicious. I love that. This thing actually does damage. You know, what, you know what also does damage? It has Electromorphosis, which is a great ability. Anytime this thing takes, you know, damage, its electric moves are charged, they do 1.5 times the damage they would the next turn. That is really, really big damage, especially on freaking Belly Bolt. Static is also another really good ability. You know, getting 30% para is really, really nice. Is there a fucking ad going on in my music video? Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, Static is really, really nice. Um, but the move pool is, the move pool is really where you make your money. Oh, also, I really like the belly bolt shiny. It's yellow. I like it. But the real move pool or the real money maker is the move pool. And you see it right there. This thing doesn't get a lot of moves, but, uh, this thing gets quality well over quantity because we got slack off. This Pokemon can heal itself. It's so resilient because just having slack off makes it so resilient. Like it's bulky. It's resilient. It gets, I don't know. It's just so good. Reliable recovery is so good. It's not reliant on Clefable having to pass a wish to it. This thing just heals itself. It's very self-sufficient in that regard. And that is so, so comforting to have. It also gets access to Toxic, which is a move that Lantern would love to have. Makes this thing much less passive, you know, dealing damage with Toxic, strong ass electric moves, uh, and stuff like Discharge and Volt Switch, super duper nice. Uh, and with, you know, it gets water moves to hit ground types like Bundy Water and Chilling Water, but I made this thing a Terra Captain for a reason. We'll get into that in just a short little bit, but also gets dual screens, which is really, really nice. I've, you know, used, ref I thought about using Reflect Sets on this thing just to make it even more bulky on the physical side. Chilling Water is a funny move. I used it with Iron Bundle week one. Probably going to use it with this thing in the future. It's just very bulky. It is not, you know, passive in any regard. Hits back with, you know, reasonable damage. And it's just very hard to take out. And it's very resilient, you know, throughout the whole game. So, I made Belly Bolt a Terra Captain. What three types did I give it? Obviously Electric. I have to pick one Stab type. And it's Mono Electric. The second type, you know, actually, let's just back up. Remember, all the way back in the draft breakdown, all that time ago, we were so young, so naive. Uh, it was about like two weeks ago. I said, I really want bulky waters. I like having bulky waters in my drafts and not having them make me feel kind of naked. Well, this is our bulky water. Boom, Terra Water Belly Bolt. This is a Terra Captain on par with Lucario, in my opinion. Okay, not on par, but like comparably like scarily comparable to lucario because this thing just becomes really bulky water is just a fantastic defensive typing it lets me hit ground types with the stab terror blast it gives me stab on chilling water and muddy water just in case i want to run those um i didn't even mention it gets power ball charge which is just a good move also it's just i don't know it just gets a bunch of weird moves but this works 
Get soaked, dude. I'm gonna use soak at this thing. Are you kidding me? Of course I am. But yeah. Terra water in this thing is very nice. It lets me hit ground types. Um, and it just gives me, you know, good resistance. It's like fire. Um, I mean, notably fire. This is the, like, big, big one. Um, resist water as well. Take neutral damage from ground moves. I mean, I still keep it steel resistance, but water is such a nice type. It's only weak to electric and grass, and I have a fucking Latios. So, I'm good against electric and grass types. Uh, and do you know what else I have that's good against electric and grass types? Terra Grass Belly Bolts. <laughs> Also beats them because the thing is the second terror type. I chose terror grass. I was debating between terror grass and terror poison I ended up with terror grass uh, I might regret the decision down the line, but bramble gas is not a very bulky grass type uh, And belly bolt definitely is so that's very nice um, But yeah, terror grass belly bolt, you know gives me a resist to ground as well uh, Or turns itself into a ground resistance uh, And it still, you know hits ground types with super effective terror terror blast It's just very nice very succinct very you know it works with it very well so yeah that's the team um so to just change this out a little bit instead of screamtail we have go fable instead of quillfish we have skuntank uh, and we'll, we'll make these guys shiny why not no, you're shiny you're shiny instead of copperaja we have registeel and instead of lantern we have Belly bolts. They're just also shiny. But yeah, our new squad is Latios, Terra Lucario, Iron Bundle, Cinderace, Clefable, Staraptor, Skuntank, Registeel, Terra Belly Bolt, Bramblegast, and Gligar. Super proud of the squad. I'm super proud to, or I'm super excited to see where it's going to take us for the season. Um, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.